hello welcome to module 58 of nptel noc a course on point set topology part 2 so we continue with the theme homogeneity so today we are reaping the final result of all our uh, efforts last time so let x be any n dimensional manifold n greater than or equal to 2 for any k greater than or equal to 1 take two k subsets p1 p2 pk q1 q2 qk okay take any two p k subsets inside x given any open connected subset u such that the union of p and q is inside u so important open connected subset conclusion is there exists a homeomorphism psi from x to x and an open subset v of uh, of uh, you know of v is open inside x such that P union Q is inside V, contained inside V bar, contained inside the original open connected subset U. That is the first condition. V bar is compact, that is the second condition. Psi is identity outside V, that is in the complement of V, this is the third one. The last but least, not least important is PIs are mapped to QI for I equal to 1 to 3 up to QA by Psi. So that is the homogeneity. K fold homogeneity. So let us see how one proves it. We have prepared all the requirements already. So first I will take the case namely P and Q are disjoint sets. They are finite sets with k elements, p and q are disjoint sets. Logically, this is not necessary, but writing down the proof becomes very easy with this approach. You can have different uh, ways of uh, proving this also. So I, I choose this one. First I choose, I assume that p and q are disjoint. Suppose we have completed the proof for this case. Then first I will show you how to complete the proof in the general case. Okay. So suppose we have proved this case, namely P Q empty set. Then what I do is to complete the proof. So I choose another K subset R, R1 R2 R K inside U itself, which is completely disjoint from P as well as Q. Now I apply the, the case here, namely P and R are disjoint, they are K subsets. Therefore, by this assumption, I get a homeomorphism Psi 1 and another one Psi 2 for Q, right? Both of them are homeomorphisms of X such that there are subsets V1, V2 of U satisfying the required conditions. What are the conditions? Let us just recall. P union U, P union R is inside V1, V1 bar contained inside U. Similarly, for the other case, Q union R is contained inside V2, contained inside V2 bar, contained inside U. VI bars are compact. Psi i is identity on the complement of VI, i equal to 1 and 2. And Psi 1 of PI is Ri. Similarly, Psi 2 of QI is Ri. Because P and R disjoint and Q and R also disjoint. Once we have this, all that we have to do is take Psi equal to Phi 2 inverse of Psi 2 inverse of Psi 1. Okay. That will map Pi to Qi. Pi goes to Ri and then the inverse map comes back to Qi. Outside V1 union V2 both of them will be identity therefore the the composition will be also identity 
v1 even in u2 being uh, you know closure of that will be v1 bar even in v2 bar so that is also complex so all other things are opposite now assume that now p intersection q is empty and prove it then the proof will be completed for this i will to use induction on k when k is 1 we have already proved it in the previous uh, proposition any point can be moved to any other point within a connected open set that we have proved already and for this we don't need even the assumption any greater equal to 2 even for any equal to 1 we have proved this okay anyway for k greater than equal to 2 we of course need the assumption n greater than equal to 2 we can't move otherwise because we have already seen that in uh, in this example we have seen that for n equal to 1 there are counter examples it is not possible that okay even for r it is not possible to do that always with the uh, the full force of this one it is not possible all right so we assume n greater than equal to 2 and make the make this uh, you know induction hypothesis now okay now where is the induction hypothesis on k minus 1 subsets and on open subsets containing them therefore starting with u which is already given to me and p1 p2 pk what i do i take the open subset u minus pk qk that is an open subset n greater than equal to 2 therefore it is connected also throwing away Finite many points from a connected subset of uh, R n. First we have seen for any manifold also connectivity is not destroyed, so it is still connected. Okay, so you apply the theorem not for u but u minus this one, which contains p1, p2, pk minus one and q1, q2, qk minus one. Okay, therefore the induction hypothesis gives you. A homeomorphism that is denoted by psi prime, and an open subset V prime such that P I Q I S R inside V prime now contained inside the P prime bar, which is compact. The whole thing contained is a U minus P K Q K. So I apply it to this uh, connected subset such that this psi prime takes P I to Q I. I equal to one, two, three up to k minus one, and psi prime is identity outside this set, v prime. In particular, it will not disturb p k and q k. On p k, psi prime of p k is p k, psi prime of q k is q k. Those things are not disturbed, right? So now, how to complete the proof? Once again, n greater than equal to I use. It follows that u minus all these finitely many points, 2k minus 1, 2k minus 2 in them, that is also connected. Connected open set, so it's path connected. So we can find a path. You, you look at this one. I now I am throwing these points. So p k and q k are still there inside this one, right? So because of the path connectivity, I can join them by a path. Omega from zero one to u, such that omega zero is p k and omega one is q k. Moreover, I do it inside this set now, inside this open set. That means what? This omega does not pass through any of these points, two k minus two points. Okay, we can then find a connected open set V double prime of this connected subset such that the image of this path omega 0 1 is contained inside this open subset which is connected and its closure is compact contained inside this subset so this is another lemma which we have proved so let me show you this lemma so that was the lemma starting with any path And contained inside an open subset, arbitrary open subset, actually, you can find a 
path connected open subset u of x such that u bar is compact and a contains i u contains u bar contains v okay you apply that so we have got this thing okay this v double prime here now apply the theorem for just uh, those two points that's all get a psi double prime from x to x homeomorphism such that psi double prime is identity outside this v double prime and maps p k to q k that's all okay now how that you have to do is take psi as psi double prime composite psi prime psi prime will map p i to q i up to k minus 1 and then psi double prime will take over that one and maps p k to q k whereas psi double prime is identity on all these you know all these points so p i's have gone to q i's but psi double prime does not disturb them okay therefore the psi will be the required map clearly it is compact it is identity outside v prime u and v double prime both of them contained inside you so that is a proof so uh, this is a big theorem we have proved now okay thanks to efforts last time we have already done all the preparation so here is a remark recall that if g is acting g is a group acting on a set x we say the action is transitive if given any two elements a and b you can find an element g inside the group such that g of a is b any any two points can be mapped to each other this same thing as also saying that the orbit space is the entire space x there is single orbit similarly for k greater than equal to 2 we say the g action is k transitive or k fold transitive you can just say k transitive also if for every pair of k subsets a and b of x there exists one single g such that g of a equal to b that means if we have a1 a2 ak here and b1 b2 bk here g of ai equal to b that also you can manage okay which way you take that that you can you can even demand that now i have just written g a b that's all the above theorem asserts that the group this hx namely group of all self homeomorphisms of x okay on a connected n manifold x n greater than equal to 2 is a k fold transitive for all k there was no restriction on k in the previous theorem this fact is very useful in the study of group theoretic properties of hx now what i am going to do is i'm going to give you a topological application of this theorem the application itself is useful that i will not be able to do okay so here is the corollary take a connected n manifold okay given any finite subset p of x any finite subset there exists an open subset u of x such that this p is contained inside u that is very easy but the this last part is stunning u bar is homeomorphic to dn or just u will be homeomorphic to the open disk the u bar is homeomorphic to dn is stronger so you think about this one any and any finite set scattered around the entire manifold the only mani only condition is that x is connected and dimensional manifold okay so any finite set can be contained inside a you know one single disk homeomorphic disk that's the meaning here there is no there is no metric here now we don't we haven't fixed any matrix on topological spaces though they are metrizable okay so this is an easy corollary now to this theorem let us see how 
for n greater than or equal to 2 of course first choose any open set v in x such that v bar is homeomorphic to dn okay any open set you can choose there are plenty of them okay next choose q elements you know q contain inside v contain inside x where q is a k subset any k subset any finite subset what you want depends upon what e p you have chosen is p is a k subset you choose a k subset here that's all okay inside any uh, open set with uh, which is homeomorphic d l that you can do now the above theorem says that we have homeomorphism p from x to x such that p of p is equal to q all that i have chosen is cardinality of q is equal to cardinality of p that's what you have to choose k subset okay so p can be mapped to q but what happens now take u equal to p inverse of p v is homeomorphic to dn v bar is homeomorphic to dn this p is defined on the whole of x so p inverse of v bar will be actually equal to u bar that will be homeomorphic to dn as well over and clearly u contains p okay so for n greater than equal to 2 you have done but i have stated this theorem even for n equal to 1 right for that this theorem early this theorem will not be able to give you that for one point there is no need of that theorem so similarly for n equal to 1 you don't need this theorem but something else what is that namely the one which we are going to prove namely we completely classify the manifolds one dimensional manifolds connected one dimensional manifolds from that it will be easy because all that you have to do is x equal to either open interval 0 1 or the circle verify the statement for open interval 0 1 any finite subset you can take a slightly bigger interval over right similarly for s1 also take a finite subset take any point which is not one of this finite subset if you remove that point rest of them is an open arc which is homeomorphic to uh, open open set so you make it slightly smaller then its closure will be also homeomorphic to dn over so you just remove a small arc closed arc okay or an open arc which is disjoint from the given finite set so the statement is easy for dimension 1 case but you should know that we have to do it only for these two cases okay so that follows from classification therefore we will not separately prove it all right the classification theorem will be proved so okay now i will uh, give you something about this abstract manifolds okay the following result tells us that after all we could have just stuck to the study of you know subsets of euclidean spaces with the all those paraphernalia second countability of hausdorff ness etc would have been automatic metrizability would be an automatic so you could have just studied those spaces for manifolds why so this is the theorem that i am going to state it at least the single result has several implications in topological homotopical and homological properties of a manifold though we shall not be able to entertain them in this course okay so those things will be taken up in the subsequent uh, in algebraic topology course so what is this theorem this is a theorem every n manifold is homeomorphic to a closed subset of r 2n plus 1 so that is the meaning of embedding this stronger thing than saying it is a closed embedding closed subset of r 2n plus 1 this is n manifold this is 2n plus 1 so you have to increase the dimension quite a bit namely double plus 1 there is a elaborate statement here 
take every take any closed end manifold okay topological manifold the set of embeddings of x inside i2 n plus 1 okay that means what they are functions from x to this i is just 0 cross 1 interval 0 cross 1 raised to 2 n plus 1 you don't have to go even to r whole of r to n plus 1 this is dense in the space the continuous functions x to i to n plus 1 with the compact open topology so that is the statement of course this is, is the more elaborate statement than this one take any function continuous function you can approximate it by a embedding in particular there will be an embedding okay you can take a constant function approximate it by embedding means what there will be such a small very small around that point as small as you please there will be a copy of this uh, entire manifold so arbitrary small neighborhoods of every point will contain a copy of the n dimension manifold so that is the strong conclusion of this theorem okay i will not be able to do this one this is very uh, powerful uh, result i will not be able to do even this one here because these proofs are quite lengthy they don't need many more techniques than what we have done but uh, there are some techniques needed but they are quite lengthy so i will not be able to do that however i will tell you a few things about this namely the proof of this theorem are very lengthy and hard there is a smooth version of this one also which goes under the name easy whitney embedding theorems for that you have to do differential topology so those proofs are much easier to do also which you may read from many books such as for example my own book however for the topological case there are not so many easy references you are welcome to see the excellent book of hurwitz walman from which i have taken this statement <laughs> okay so i will give you a uh, correct reference also it is theorem 5th chapter theorem 3 or you may choose to read a nice proof of embedding theorem from munkre's book here we shall be satisfied with an easy proof of a weaker version namely compact case every compact manifold with or without boundary this time i allow it to have boundary also okay that is why i specifically mentioned here e is homeomorphic to a closed subset of some euclidean space okay so it can be embedded so i have taken this statement here this this one and put extra condition namely it is compact so that we will prove now okay yeah here so being x is being uh, compact right cover x by finitely many open subsets ui 1 less than ui less than k on each of which huh, there is a homeomorphism fi from ui to a where this a is either rn or hn see here i am taking ui to a itself this on to so it's homeomorphism on to a on to rn or on to hn because why i have to put hn because i i allow x to be manifold with boundary points also right there may be boundary points so i have to allow this one also so there are two two different cases have to be allowed as the case may be okay so there will be once uh, one issue cover this one by open subset like this x is compact due to the finite uh, cover now go to our standard this uh, inverse of stereographic projection eta from rn to sn okay sn minus the north pole to rn you have the stereographic projection pi whatever it is the inverse of that 
okay so this uh, this this will miss uh, the eta of rn is the entire of sn minus the north pole that much you know already okay so stereography projection and then take gi from x to sn to be the extension of this eta composite fi see fi's are defined only on ui to a what is a a is rn or hn hn is a subset of rn so there is an eta so eta composite fi makes sense so we get a function from ui to sn right so gi is an extension of that wherein the rest of the the close set here x minus ui is sent to the north pole we have to see that because of the surjectivity of a this is a continuous function okay so that i will leave it to you it is not very difficult so all this gi i equal to 1 to 3 up to k are now continuous functions from x to sn what is its property on ui it is 1 1 then you are composing with eta so that is also 1 1 so important property of this one is on each ui gi is 1 1 map when you take a 1 1 1 map product with any number of them it will still be 1 1 map so what happens is this g1 g2 g cross i have taken because of g1 this g will be 1 1 on u1 because of g2 it will be 1 1 on u2 and so on right so each of them is 1 uh, 1 on u1 u2 u3 they cover it but why the entire thing is 1 1 so that you have to verify so there you have to specifically use how x minus ui has been mapped x minus y goes to north pole none of the points ui goes to the north pole okay they are outside sn minus they are inside sn minus the north pole so they are not mapped on that's all you have to check okay so check that g itself is a 1 1 mapping continuous 1 1 this is compact and that is half star therefore it's a homeomorphism on to a closed subset over is it okay next time we shall take up the classification of one dimensional manifolds fine